where are we? That's right, we've just arrived to the underbelly of Cuba, the southern side of Cuba, and there is work to be done, but someone is a little tired. Come on, Schnookums, we gotta get up for kisses. Okay, what about the other? I'm so tired. What about boring cuddles? How much has passed since the alarm clock? Uh, How much? Uh, seven minutes? Mm. Look why at the little... Why have we organised to go so early doing the conk? I didn't organise it. He said. I said we're going to go help him. Who mm. organises cleaning the conk at 8 a.m.? Jesus, I need to sleep. I'm tired. It's cold. My, the little beautiful is very beautiful. And she needs a lot of beauty sleep. And it's cold. I, on the other hand, require very little sleep for obvious reasons. That's not true. You're just complaining that you were tired and where it was your blanket that you were cold last night. Yeah, it was a bit cold last night. Good we job. got a cold front come through. <sighs> Two days ago. That's um, really, really cold. In my wetsuits, they suck. <laughs> Come on, my little one. Let's go. Well, why don't you stay here and I'll do all the conk? No, because I want to learn too. Well, I'll teach you afterwards. No, you There won't, won't be any arguments in that. <laughs> Margarita is a girl mm. that doesn't like to be shown how to do anything. Ever. That's not true. You're just not a good teacher to me. I think that's part of the... <laughs> part of the problem is you say, Margarita, beautiful, what you do is it's best to do it like this. And she goes, no, I think it's better to do it this way. And then she goes and does it that way. <laughs> so I'm thinking, why does she need me to teach her anything at all when she wants to work it out herself? Looks like there will be no conk filming today, people, since the producer, director, writer, cameraman is a bit tired. But that's okay. Let's take out the drone. Stretching well beyond the horizon, there is almost a never-ending chain of uninhabited caves and reefs. The white beaches just keep going and going and going and going and going. Margarita is scared of crocodiles, so I quietly asked the Cuban guys about them here. They said there may be a croc somewhere around the island. They gave me a map and I transferred the information to this picture here. Uh, well, maybe I better not show this to Margarita. But look at this. Wow, look at these colours. I just want to swim the whole reef and find every nook and cranny, every cave and say hello to all the fish. Not hello as in shoot you to death kind of hello, but a genuine hello and be present with these magnificent creatures. And well, yes, a possible death hello later on, but let's not wreck the moment, eh? Yes, people, I believe I am a reeferholic. Don't do any drugs, don't need to when I have this. We're going to be spending the afternoon with our Cuban friends. We're going to be making bread. Um, I'm just going to make the dough so it has plenty of time to rest. And then we use their oven if they have one. <laughs> and they're going to teach us how to cook that animal that we showed before. That cute little one that I don't remember the name, but you're going to find out soon. So I dropped Margarita off with the Cubans so she could do the bread. Noel here is obviously married. He says, see, yes, 10 times in less than three seconds. He's well trained. 
Speaking of well trained, Margarita asked me to get her a grouper. Now, I don't like shooting grouper because they're a bit easy, but you know, well, I'm trained too. Now on this run, I run into one of my old friends. This is Murray the Moray Eel, as opposed to Murray the Mud Crab that I let go those many years ago because of our friendship. Oh, those were the days, people. He looks hungry. Well, I can sort that out. I think he smells a rat. I suppose it doesn't help me pulling it away all the time though, but then something unexpected happens. I really wanted the moray eel to come out of the hole more and eat the fish. You know, it's more dramatic than the crab doing it, just sitting in his hole. It's one of these funny things. I mean, I think the moray eel is scared of the crab because the crab can do what it likes, you know, claw it and rip its head off. Yet the crab is scared of the octopus. But the octopus probably fears the moray eel. It's one of those amazing balances in nature. In fact, it's probably the original rock, paper, scissors. Well, I see no grouper in the shallow, dirty water. We're going to have to go deep where it's all clear. <laughs> Just ahead is a hogfish. Excellent eating, but look how easy it would be to spear this. No skill at all, so let's let him be. This is a cute little Cubera playing hide and seek. Oh, where's my bloody gun? Damn, I knew I was down here for something.
blah 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 I caught a fish from margarita let's move on no people I'm not doing cardiac massage just look closely you can see a bit of a tail coming out of the mouth now Check out that, a partially digested fish. Look at the relative lengths of the fish. The smaller one is about 60% the length of the large one. Now that is one big meal, people, especially if you look at how the little fish has been digested. About 40% of the little fish was sticking out into the fish's mouth. Now that can't be too comfortable, people. Welcome to Hutia Preparation 101, Part 1, and 2, and 3, and 4, and 5, and 6. Immerse in boiling water for a minute or two. Cubans are very poor people and they were telling us that they eat anything that walks, flies, crawls or swims, without exception. With the country in such a bad economic position, they really have no choice. They tell me this is the same preparation for rats, so there you go people, you need never be hungry again, especially if you use the subway. In this department we're doing the cooking.
gentlemen, it is time for a chess tournament the likes of which the world has never seen. More thrilling than Kasparov versus Deep Blue, we have Cuba versus Australia. Granted, not usually the heavyweights in this illustriously vicious game, but it will be a tough game nonetheless. Cuba has the hometown advantage of 5-2, to two, plus a shitload of monkeys who knows which hands feed them. We're just playing chess while we wait for the monkeys to come. We dropped some food and we made the monkey call and left the Ojmo action there attached to, to a tree with a rope so I don't steal it to see if we can feel and them we closer. we really tight because apparently they can undo anything. Yeah, they're, they're, they're pretty smart. I was hoping to have the whole lot filmed and I'd put it into a six part series with analyses but unfortunately the cameraman got bored and started socialising. So this is all the footage we've got. Many would say thank God. Cuba is in trouble and it's Australia's move. I want to put my knight here. Yes, I could get a free bishop, but where is the fun in that, people? He's already down two knights and I'm down only two pawns. So if I move my knight here, he will be in check, which is really no big deal. However, by moving my knight, it opens up an attack from my queen to his unprotected rook. He has to move his king, and so his rook is gone. Now let's say he moved his king out of check like this, and I took his rook with my queen. I really am not sure what his next move will be, because they're all terrible. But my next move would be to bring my bishop down to here, which his bishop can't take because it's pinned against his queen. So I get his bishop for free. But in actual fact, he moved his king here, attacking my knight that was now on that square. I sacrificed my knight, but then his king was out and about and all alone. So, after an exchange of queens, he was in checkmate about 10 or so moves later with my rook, both my bishops, a knight and a pawn. So let's go back to this picture. What is the best move that Cuba can make after Australia moves the knight? There are only two, ring Castro and have Australia thrown into jail for not having a visa, or bump the table. Wow, my goodness. Gee, steady on, mate. Far out. There is tomorrow. I don't know where this monkey puts it. I, I don't. I, this is like an ex-girlfriend of mine and chocolate. I, I just, words cannot express. Are you a sailing into freedoms fan? I sure am. They're the best. They ought to be applauded. I feel like applauding them right now. A lot of us here are sailing into freedom fans. Right, fellas? Yay! Yay! Well, except for those two coming up from behind, they're Pootie Pie fans. I keep away from them. Yeah, we love sailing into freedom, but this guy behind us, he's a Pootie Pie fan. Yeah, a bit of a wanker. Yeah, see what I mean? That's Margaret's bread. It's not bad, but we need to work in it. This is Cordia. That's that little animal that um, we saw Noel um, chopping up. So let's try it. It's very good. Really good. Bueno. Now we're going to get Margarita. We've got a thumbs up for Margarita. Well, you can't get better than that. Join us next week to see more of Cuba.